Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of our Committee Access. This week we'll show you the bridge dedication in Oxford. Then our crew went to the Lax Bash Lacrosse Tournament, all today at our Committee Access. Welcome back. On June 2nd, Oxford dedicated the Larry Bobrecht Bridge in Oxford with the story as reporter, Rachel Baker. Rachel? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at Merge Studio to dedicate this bridge crossing over M24 to Mr. Larry Obrecht, a sincere champion for the Pollyann Trail. Let's go see what it's all about. Thank you for coming out today on this suspicious occasion. You know, you never need a reason to come to the Pollyann Trail. But today we have a good one, and that's to honor a gentleman that has put his efforts forth in the past and continues, continues to do that and to uh, show us a leading example of how to get things done and make an impression and help your community. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the history of the Pollyann Trail, um, Larry was our first trail manager. He also was our county commissioner. He, the Pollyann Trail literally would not be the trail it is today if it hadn't been for him. So with that said, he, he undertook a huge task. I'm not sure if he really understood at the time how big a job it was going to turn into, but he did it, he stuck with it, and we all have the privilege and the availability of a beautiful trail in Oakland County uh, that we can all, all enjoy. So with that said, we're fortunate today. We have a number of dignitaries here. Um, Larry's worked with most of them and knows, knows all of them. And uh, among them, uh, I wanna thank Senator Marlowe and our Oakland County Executive, uh, L. Brooks Patterson, who also supported the trail in, in the past and continue to do so. And with that, it's my privilege and my honor to be able to introduce L. Brooks Patterson and ask that you give him your attention and Welcome, Brooks. I'm delighted to be here because I know how hard Larry worked over the years. Uh, I think this was in the range of 16 years from beginning to end. And uh, that's a lot of work and a lot of perseverance and a lot of uh, effort that went into uh, making this beautiful trail connect North Oakland. Uh, Larry, I got to tell you, in those days, you were quite a bore. <laughs> I, I say... I say, hey, Larry, how's it going? Oh, the trail's almost halfway complete. <laughs> hey, Larry, my, my daughter had a little baby girl. Uh, what did, did she name him? Polly Ann? <laughs> it's what, uh, everything was connected to the trail back in those days. And uh, so it was on his mind. He, was, he ate, drank, and slept. It. We, we know, we've heard from blood, sweat, and tears. That's Larry's donation to this effort here. So I'm just here to say congratulations, Larry. See a lot of guys and gals from around the county road commission and so forth who had a hand in this and um, I just think uh, I didn't you raise what four million yeah where were we when I was running for governor <laughs> 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 anyway uh, it's quite an honor and to have this bridge named Larry Oprah bridge I think is a fitting honor well deserved congratulations yeah. okay thank you at this time I'd like to ask Senator Marlowe to say a few words to us thank you Senator once again, I, I can only tell you that I was super impressed with uh, Larry's commitment and dedication to all of the communities, treated everyone equal and, uh, and fair, and we got uh, the, the, the trail completed. Uh, we could have not done this without Larry, and I can also tell you that this is a great thank you to, to Larry's family because uh, uh, Papa was missing, Dad was missing, uh, this was his last child called Pollyanna <laughs> and uh, a tremendous amount of time was spent out here every weekend uh, Larry was out here and uh, we, we just definitely want to thank him for what he has brought us uh, the jewel that we have in Oakland County and I'm not going to go into any more details 
because uh, I'm just going to take time away from Larry. So uh, I'm going to, and again, one person I just definitely want to thank is uh, Frank Fountain here in the front row. Uh, without their uh, uh, steadfast commitment to this trail, and that is the Chrysler Foundation, uh, the match would have never happened. And so without Frank, <clears throat> without Chrysler, there would have been no trail. That's no two ways about that. But they were the, uh, the original ones that stepped up, and then Larry will commit to more on how that worked. But uh, again, thank you very much. Mike? I guess, I guess we'll let the man of the hour have a few minutes here. So everybody here already knows Larry Obrecht, so come on. Thank you all for being here. This is an unbelievable honor for me. Uh, and uh, it's incredible. I, I learned about this about six weeks ago. Uh, they let me know because uh, they wanted uh, to set a date and, uh, and make some arrangements for doing this. And uh, so for six weeks, I have not yet got over this. Uh, it's just uh, an incredible, incredible honor and, uh, and uh, for myself and my family. And, and the other thing is, you may be the face of a project, as uh, perhaps I am of the Pollyann Trail project. But it's all of the volunteers, all of the hands-on people, people that are gathered here, many of who are gathered here today, and many who are not, that really made this trail a reality. So it's all of those people that we are really honoring uh, today, uh, who showed up when we needed them uh, the very most uh, for being here. This is really, really special for me. Uh, but remember that my name on that bridge is uh, just a reminder and, and uh, uh, significant to all of the volunteers, all of the donors, all of the people that it took to do this job. Surely wasn't me, it was all of you. So thank you very much and I'll see you on the trail. More people came to volunteer than actually responded that they were going to volunteer. That just really, just, I, I'm overwhelmed. It's just so fabulous. So from this point on, we're going to meander across the bridge carefully. The roads are open. And we're going to cut our ribbon. And then we're going to have cake and champagne. So you got to have a little bubbly on a beautiful day like this. Linda Moran, the Pollyann Trail Manager. So I'm going to ask you, Ms. Linda Moran, who was Larry Obrecht and what did he do? Larry Obrecht was the first trail manager and he's actually the father of the trail. Uh, through his hard work and dedication, he actually created what we have now. So it's just fabulous. I understand that he was one of the first champions to not sell off the uh, Pollyann Trail piecemeal to landowners because it was a abandoned railroad. What did he do? Um, he actually just did a lot of legislative acts and did a lot of, of hard effort to make it go back to the DNR. And then the DNR was able to create the Rails to Trails. So he was kind of like one of the forefronters of the Rails to Trails. So he worked tirelessly to get us what we have now. So and it's just, I, I, I can't say enough kind words about him. He just really worked hard. So, all right. Thank you so much for talking with me, Ms. Moran. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks. What does it mean to you to have this bridge dedicated to him? It means a lot 
not just to me, but I think to all of the communities that Larry has worked in and represented. And it's a fitting recognition because without his efforts, the trail would not be what it is today. <laughs> Larry did, uh, took this thing from basically what I used to refer to as the Wild West and brought it uh, to the 21st century. All right, that's a wrap from the bridge dedication today. We got to talk to Larry Obrecht himself and all the people that helped sponsor it. Thank you to all the communities and volunteers that actually went into contributing to the Holly Ann. Now we've got a trail that is fully developed and a bridge that's dedicated to the man himself. Thank you, and back to you, Bill. Thanks, Rachel. Next up, a crew went to the Seymour Park for the Lax Bash Lacrosse. The event was on Saturday and Sunday, June 2nd and 3rd, with a story with our reporters Cody Wright and Rachel Baker. We're at Seymour Lake Park at the Midwest Lacrosse Bash. I'm Rachel Baker. I'm Cody Wright. Let's see what's going to happen. All right, I got a team right here. What team are you guys? Traverse City. Traverse City. Traverse City? Yeah. Traverse City. Traverse City, okay. So how old are you guys? You 12. I'm 11. 12. 11. 12. 10. 10. All right, and why do you guys do lacrosse? Do you like the sport or do you do it because your parents made you? I love the sport. I love it to death. I, li I like the sport. I love it. I love it. I love it. What about you? Do you like lacrosse? This sport is amazing, yes. <laughs> yeah, all right. So what position do you guys play? What, do you would, what would you say is the most important position in lacrosse? My position is midfield, and it's the most important because you play defense and offense. Oh, are you a midi? My brother's a midi. Yes, yes I am a midi. All right. Okay, and what about you guys? Who's offense? Raise your hands. Offense? Offense, all right. Offense. Defense, uh, midis? Nice. And where's my goalies? Look at you. You got an important job. All right. Is being goalie hard? Yeah. How long have you been playing? Um, two years. Oh, wow. You must be pretty good. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to go pro pretty soon? Yeah. What about you guys? Ready to go pro? Yeah! Number yes. one! Number I've already one. got like 15 scholarships, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got me beat. All right, who's going to win today? Our squad! We're number one! Heat! 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 Hi, there you go! How many of your kids play? Uh, both my children, yeah. And then how old is your son that's playing right now? Uh, he just turned 11. Yeah. How long has he played? Uh, so he's been playing about two years now. Wow. And I understand you play too, Hunter, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been playing? Um, two years. Two years. What position do you play? Um, defense. Okay, and how, you told me you were undefeated yesterday? Oh wow, that must feel good. Yeah. All right, I like your shirt. It's really cute. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's your favorite part about playing lacrosse? That you get to check and try to push people out of the way for the ball. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun, isn't it? All right, how old are you? Eight. You have a future pro here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. All right, thank you for talking with me. Thank you. with two parents of the lacrosse kids so can you guys tell me what preparations went into getting your kids or your team ready well we came from about two hours away so we had to make sure they had all their gear packed and we had food for the whole weekend for them good proteins and drinks and all of that so everything a mom would do to make sure their kids are taken care of that's that's really great how long have you um, been training 
all year or just seasonally? Um, all year, pretty much. Um, some of the kids on our team play uh, year-round lacrosse. My husband's also the coach this season, so we're having a great year and a lot of fun. All right, what, what team do you guys play for? Caledonia. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that is far. All right, so how old are your sons? Or I have three boys that play, and so I have a third grader, a fifth, sixth grader, and an eighth grader. And what about you? Same. I have just one playing. Uh, he's 14. He's an eighth grader also. This team that we play on, that we're watching currently, is the seven eighth grade team from Caledonia. As a daughter of a, a parents that put us in, in sports and athletics extracurriculars, in addition to school, it must be pretty busy. How much, yeah, right, how much work goes into being there and making sure that your stuff is balanced too? Well, they practice often when they don't have games. They're practicing, and then we do some weekend tournaments. So it's a pretty short season as far as sports go. Um, we started in April our games, and then this is our finale. So we're hoping to win it all. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, both of our sons play football, and we're coached by my husband in football, too. Uh, my son is a wrestler also, and um, I know that her son also plays soccer. So we're pretty busy households, and like she said, she has three sons still playing sports. I do have four sons, but uh, the one playing today is my last one at home, so we're kind of, you know, easing out. Well, that, that's really great to hear. You guys are really hardworking. Thank you so much for all your support. So, um, who are you guys playing against? I have no idea. Canton. 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 Yeah. All right. Who's the better team? Uh, well, right now we are winning nine to three. So, yes. Wow. Canton's getting creamed. All right. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs>
here with Kevin Workler of Wolf Athletics. So can you tell me where you guys are based out of and what makes you guys unique? So we started this company about four years ago. We started out of um, Chicago, Illinois. We recently moved to North Carolina. Um, what makes us unique is just the, what, the material that we use. So here we have the world's lightest lacrosse shaft. It's only 3.7 ounces, um, the next lightest shaft. So this is like a 97 grams. Next one's like 160. Um, and we also have the world's strongest shaft right here. It's a little bit heavier. Um, what makes us unique though is that we use Kevlar to make these six. So it's a 120 layers. Most of our competitors don't even come close to that. Um, what we do is we give kids a big discount if they let us uh, break their sticks in half with ours. Only thing that happens to our stick is that we get a little bit of a paint chip. Um, unbelievable. So well, You use so. Kevlar. That's insane. Yeah. So it's half Kevlar, half um, carbon fiber. That, that is really strong. And so what kind of, um, so did you guys drive all the way up from North Carolina to be here? Yeah, we fly in between tournaments. Um, we have people in California, Colorado. Um, we have a guy in South Carolina right now and on the East Coast. So we have about eight people selling, four tournaments, six tournaments every weekend. That's crazy. You guys look at a lot of business. Yeah, we're, we're really growing. Um, I think we're doubling. So we re came out with these composite shafts two years ago, um, and we've doubled year over year. I forgot this one. This is our bulletproof glass stick. Bulletproof glass stick? Yeah, both for class. This is our flagship product that came out four years ago. We so use that? that yeah, you can use so them online. Crazy. We have like glow in the dark ones, LED balls. Uh, we have this world, Kidders Book World Record fastest shot with the uh, Go Shaft. Wow, do you guys sell the pros? Um, yes, we do. So, one of our most popular pro shafts is this. We sell this to a lot of professional box players. They're so big and strong, they like to uh, you know, not have a break their stick. So, this is our big box shaft. That is absolutely insane. So, uh, is this your first time in Michigan? No, we've been here before. Uh, we did a tournament last year. Oh, okay. All right. So, um, so how many things do you think you sell these annually? Um, I think last year we sold 5,000. This year we're on pace to sell about 12,000 shafts. Wow, that, that's really brilliant. All right. Um, how did you get the idea to use Kevlar? Do you know? So, we actually merged the, uh, a guy who created the composite golf uh, club from Callaway. So, two years ago, he left Callaway after inventing that uh, club, which is their best-selling club. And uh, we merged with us, and now we make... Uh, <laughs> Wow, Kevlar, that's crazy. Yeah. All right, thanks for talking with me. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much. All right. We had a good W today. Uh, we're going, down, going to the next round of the playoffs. Really? Yeah. Awesome. You guys are from Birmingham? Yes, sir. Yeah. Who'd you guys just play? Uh, St. Michael's. St. Michael's. How many, what's your guys' record in the tournament so far? 4-0. Oh, 4-0. Oh. You guys are really pumped, aren't you? Yeah. Awesome, guys. What what age group is this? 7th and 8th graders. 7th and 8th graders, okay. Awesome. Um, what position we got here? So we'll go around. Midi? Yeah. Bogo? Defense. Midi. Goalie? Defense. Midi. Midi? Okay, what's the best position? Midi. We just got a bunch of mix. Okay, awesome. Alright, well thank you guys. Wish you guys the best of luck. Good luck with uh, the rest of the tournament. We're back with the Birmingham Bulldogs. They just played a game. How'd it go, guys? Oh, easy dub. Yeah, easy dub. Oh, yeah. All right, so you guys won. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So, um, what do you think? What was the score? It was a uh, five to four, right? Yeah, five four. Five four. So that's a close game. <laughs> so, so what made it? What What was the winning shot, or what was the thing that made you win? Um, we uh, we uh, brought the team together at the end. Okay. Yeah. What you said. All right, what he said. All right. Anyone have anything to say about how the game went? Uh, I think that we are the best team at this tournament, and we're going to win it all. All right, there you go. I'm here with Craig Tungate of what team? Byron Center. All right, and so what preparations have gone into making your kids ready for today? We do a lot of drills, uh, passing and catching. That's the fundamentals for lacrosse. If you can't pass and catch, you can't do a whole lot of anything else. So um, we've been practicing all season with a lot of different uh, people on other teams. So and then we've just completed our season. So and what's the age group of your team? We are U12. Hey, all right. So uh, what makes you guys unique? Uh, you know, it's the camaraderie. Every team has its own chemistry, and the kids get to, uh, in lacrosse, it's such a great sport because you have to rely on all of your teammates to pass it. Uh, when, when two defenders come upon one, one guy, you have to pass it to the open guy, and you've got to trust that he's going to make that catch. So uh, our team, everybody trusts each other, and that's really just the chemistry of it is great. All right, thanks so much for talking with me. Thank you. We're here with Brian Kamenska, so I want to ask you what preparations went into making this lacrosse bash possible? 
Well, we show up uh, on Tuesday, uh, the day after Memorial Day. We show up with a crew of about 10 to 12 people, and we paint all the fields. We put up all the signage. We rope off all the parking. We use about 12,000 feet of rope for parking. Um, I can't tell you how many how many parking cones or parking you know signs that we have out here. Um, and we start we start with a can of paint and and end with I think we have 18 different uh, tents up and you know thousand cars and, and and 94 teams. Wow, how long does it take in preparation for this to get this all to happen? Organizing all of it. Uh, organizing we start in January. Wow. Uh, we work obviously all the way through through today. At, well, well, we'll be done today about 11 o'clock tonight. Um, but this week in and of itself, we, we set up, we do about 10-hour uh, days, uh, Tuesday through Friday, and then 12 to 15-hour days here over the weekend. That is very, very hard, and I know you've been running around very busy. Uh, what are you guys doing today? Uh, we, today, it's Sunday, so it's our, it's our playoff day. It's, our, it, it's the tournament day, so we're putting out fires. You know, so every now and then, if a you know, team wants to contest a score or, or something like that, we're, we're in it, we're on it, we're talking, we're talking it through, double-checking waivers, making sure that the, that, that the teams are correct, everybody's doing and following the rules, doing what they're supposed to do. And in about an hour or so, we'll start handing out uh, championship trophies. Wow, and how many, 94 teams you said? That's a lot of people from all over the state. What do you think is like, the farthest out that you've seen? We have a team that's about an hour north of Toronto that's here and we have a team from um, Indiana that is a lot and so thank you so much for getting all this hard work done it's a lot of fun we really enjoy it we've got great vendors we have great people uh, great kids that come out and work a lot of the Oxford uh, soccer program comes out and supports and works for us uh, and helps out they've been doing it for years and they're just a wonderful group to have out with us all right there you have it thanks so much thank you All right. Well, we had a lot of fun uh, talking to the players, the coaches. You guys got you got an interview with the uh, with the guy who runs the whole thing. Yeah, we did. It was a lot of fun. Talking awesome. To all the families too. Yeah, I had a great time. All right. So thank you guys for watching. This was the uh, Midwest Lacrosse Bash, and you're watching OCTV. Have a nice day. That was another great weekend for Oxford. We had 12,000 viewers for the Tough Mudders and another three to four thousand for the lacrosse tournament. Let's do it again next year. Well, that's all the time for this week. We hope you enjoyed our program. So for our photographers, Russell Courier and Kyle Snag, for our reporters and Rachel Baker and Cody Wright, and our producer and editor, Terry Stiles, I'm Bill Service, and you have a great, great week.